Okay, well, let's uh, let's get show going here. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Cindy Erickson, your tour coordinator with Westworld Tours, and I'll be facilitating the presentation this evening. Joining me is our tour director, Carrie Carpenter, and she will be sharing with you some of the great sights on our tour to Newfoundland and Labrador. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you. Um, Welcome, everybody. Yeah. Before I turn the presentation over to Carrie, I have a couple of items to go over first. During the presentation, we'll have two pop-up polls asking for your participation by making a simple selection. If you're viewing us on Facebook, the polls will not pop up on your screen, but you can simply type your response into the comment section. And here is our first poll. We'll just get this launched here. There we go. Uh, we would like to know if you would um, like to sign up for our email newsletter. You'll receive invites to future presentations as well as timely information on new tours. You won't be inundated with emails and you can unsubscribe at any time. You may be receiving a few more emails than normal right now as we're trying to keep everybody up to date on our presentation series. From Facebook, um, again, the uh, survey is not going to show up there and uh, you can quickly send us a, an email to information at westworldtours.com or hit the message button now and please include your email address so we can get you added all right thank you everyone i will just end that now During um, the presentation, we do encourage you to ask questions at any time. Uh, that being said, we do have everyone on mute and ask that you please type your question into the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. Again, if you've joined us on Facebook, please type your question into the comment section. We do welcome your questions and we'll answer as many as we can get to at the end of our presentation. As Western Canada's premier tour company, Westworld Tours has been serving Canadians from coast to coast with escorted travel throughout North America and around the world since 2000, celebrating our 20th anniversary last year. Uh, presenting quality components, um, including modern comfortable coaches, professional tour directors, experienced courteous drivers, baggage handling and excellent accommodation. We take in all the important sites and attractions and include several meals throughout our tours. Thousands of passengers have chosen our first class style of touring, enjoying great value, security, and a stress-free environment, all while making new friends along the way. We know our tour directors enjoy getting to know you while on our tours and love to see familiar faces. Speaking about this, I'm going to launch our second poll now and I'm going to get that one up here. There we go. I'd like to know, or we would like to know how many watching this evening have traveled with Westworld Tours before. Again, anyone watching on Facebook, please enter your response into the comment section. And I'll just let you all uh, reply to that for a minute here. Let's see. Okay, it looks like 36% of you watching have traveled with us before. Uh, welcome back. We sure look forward to welcoming you aboard again, very soon, hopefully. And 64% of you have not uh, traveled with Westworld Tours before. Well, welcome. We really look forward to welcoming you on board. And I know our tour directors very much look forward to meeting you. Thanks again, everybody for participating. Westworld Tours is proud to have provided refunds in full to all our travelers affected by canceled tours due to COVID-19. After all, you should decide when and where to travel, not us. Having your travel plans canceled and not knowing when you'll be able to travel again was really disheartening enough. We know COVID-19 has changed today's world, but Westworld remains committed to the well-being of our travelers and our team. 
We are doing all that we can to adapt to the new requirements and expectations and have enhanced our already robust health and safety protocols to keep everyone safe while traveling with us. We ask that you visit our website for the most up-to-date COVID-19 information and travel policies. And here is our lineup of upcoming virtual presentations. On October 6th at 7 o'clock p.m., it's our tour to the Black Hills in Medora with our tour director, Fred Kreist. And October 13th at 7 o'clock p.m., you can join tour director Coral Romanchuk for a trip through the last frontier, Alaska and the Yukon. October 20th at 7 p.m., Coral will be joining us again, taking us through captivating Vietnam and Cambodia. That one will be very interesting as well. And if you've missed any of our previous live presentations, we have them available for viewing on our website, westworldtours.com, and we invite you to go there and have a look. Now let's get to our very popular Newfoundland and Labrador tour. This tour is going to depart July 8th to the 18th in 22, obviously. Um, residents of Newfoundland and Labrador are first to witness the sunrise in North America. They're also lucky enough to see floating icebergs, spouting whales, and playful puffins on a regular basis. Home to quaint coastal villages, lighthouses, rainbow colored houses, and some of the friendliest people you'll ever meet. You'll experience it all, along with plenty of fresh ocean air, breathtaking scenery that changes mile by mile, and more. You'll get screeched in and become an honorary Newfoundlander, visit three UNESCO World Heritage Sites, You'll witness the raw beauty and unique geological features of Grossmore National Park. You can walk in the footsteps of Vikings at Lanza Meadows National Historic Site and throw yourself into the life of a 16th century whaler at the Red Bay Basque Whaling Station. And don't forget to toast the stunning sunsets with a local iceberg beer or a shot of screech. I wanted to share uh, this with everyone. We received an email from past travelers, Patty and Mervyn, after the invite to our presentation was sent out, which reads, hello, we will not participate in your presentation, but we can certainly endorse your Newfoundland Labrador tour, which we very much enjoyed in July of 2017. Wow, can hardly believe it has been four years. I said at the time that every Canadian should experience Newfoundland, Labrador, and its wonderful people. Oh yes, the scenery is pretty awesome as well. And it said, feel free to mention our names as reference. The tour was very well organized and conducted. Well, a big thank you to Patty and Mervyn for taking the time to send us that email. We love hearing from our, our past travelers and how much they enjoyed traveling with us. So I wanted to share that with everybody. And without further ado, I am pleased to introduce you to Carrie Carpenter. Having grown up in a family where travel has always been important, Carrie loves to travel, meet and spend time with people, and learn about different cultures and places around the world. Carrie has been with Westworld Tours since 2013, spending many a summer guiding our tours through Newfoundland and Labrador bringing a great deal of knowledge and experience in her role as tour director to this beautiful part of our country. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you, Cindy. And hello to everyone joining us this evening. If you notice the picture I chose when Cindy was introducing me, some of my favorite Vikings are in Newfoundland and I would love to introduce you guys to them. Moving on to the next slide. The bottom center picture there is one of our tour groups posing in front of the Newfoundland Labrador sign. Welcome to the big land. Stratabel Isle separates the province into two geographical parts, Labrador, which is a large area of mainland Canada, and Newfoundland, an island in the Atlantic Ocean. I wanted to include some of my photos so you could see how beautiful Newfoundland and Labrador are. In the top left-hand corner, You'll see a lighthouse on a rocky cliff where it juts out into the ocean, some fishing stages located at the water's edge, and they typically consist of an elevated platform on the shore when working tables and sheds where fish can be processed. The top right hand picture is in Red Bay, Labrador, and that's a mozzie day. For you folks that have been with me before, you guys will understand that word. 
That's a Newfoundland slang for a damp and muggy. And out west, we would just call it foggy. The bottom right-hand picture shows the coastline and the steep cliffs. That's examples of what the actions of waves of the North Atlantic Ocean does to the ancient rock composition and thousands of years of continuous coastal erosion. The top left-hand picture shows off the view from the height of the land. And the right top has two boats out in the water by a craggy coastline. The bottom left picture shows the highway we travel along with the beautiful scenery as we drive by. And the bottom right hand corner is the dungeons where we see a collapsed sea cave with a natural archway that's been carved out by the sea. So let's take a look at the map on the next slide. Newfoundland became the 10th and final province to enter Confederation on March 31st, 1949. When we're in Newfoundland, they like to joke with us that it was the other way around and that Canada joined them. On December 6, 2001, an amendment was made to the Constitution of Canada to change the province's name to Newfoundland and Labrador. We're gonna fly into St. John's to start our tour, working our way towards the Northern Peninsula. And then we're gonna take the ferry to Labrador and back again 11 days later and then we will fly home from Deer Lake. You can see that Labrador shares the western, oh, we'll just flip back. You can see that Labrador shares the western part of its border with Quebec. The north-south extent of the province has prevalent westerly winds, cold ocean currents, and local factors, such as mountains and coastline, that combine to create the various climates of the province. January 1st, 2021, they had a population of 520,438. More than half the population lives in the Avalon Peninsula. And the Avalon Peninsula is the large peninsula that makes up the southeast portion of the island of Newfoundland. The province also includes over 7,000 tiny islands and no part of the island is more than 62 miles from the ocean. On the west coast, the land rises abruptly from a narrow coastal plain to the long range mountains, which reach a maximum height of 2,670 feet. The mountains give way to a plateau that slopes gently downward to the northeastern coast with its many headlands, islands, and bays. The plateau is dotted with thousands of lakes and ponds, numerous streams and rivers, including the Exploits, the Gander, and the Humber. The coastal terrain is hilly and rugged. The coast itself is marked by numerous bays and fjords, and there are many offshore islands as well. The next slide shows us some of the tour highlights of places that we will visit. And I'm quite proud that on the Westworld tour, we cover such a vast area of the province, seeing not only the beauty of the landscape and the interesting attractions, but we also meet so many wonderful friendly people as we listen to their stories, learn their way of life, both old and new, how fishing as industry has changed over the years as well. The next slide is pretty much St. John's, the capital city. It's actually closer to the coast of Ireland than it is to Winnipeg from St. John's. Now, some of you watching have probably been on some of our Westworld Maritime tours where we overnight in St. John, New Brunswick. It's a little confusing because that's St. John, New Brunswick, and this is St. John's, Newfoundland. The top left-hand corner dominating the skyline is the Cabot Tower. It's located on Signal Hill and it overlooks the city, the ocean and the narrow entrance to St. John's Harbor. In 1897, Cabot Tower was commissioned to commemorate the 400th anniversary of John Cabot's discovery of Newfoundland and Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. At Signal Hill in December 1901, Marconi and his assistant George Camp confirmed the reception of the first transatlantic radio signals. With a telephone receiver and a wire antenna kept aloft by a kite, they heard Morse code for the letter S transmitted all the way from Cornwall, England. In the top right-hand corner, 
We're going to take a morning cruise, watching for humpback and minke whales, dolphins, as well as checking out the Whitless Bay Ecological Reserve that is home to the largest Atlantic puffin colony in North America. And we're going to see other seabirds as well. That's going to include the common myrrh, the black-legged kittiwake, and the razorbill auk. The bottom left-hand corner is a colorful photo that shows some of the houses that are referred to as jelly bean houses. The big building you see in the top center of the skyline is the rooms. It can be seen from almost any point in St. John's. The rooms is a cultural facility that opened in 2005 and it houses the art gallery as well as the provincial museum and the archives. And you guys might wanna visit that in your free time. It's quite interesting. The building's name as well as its architecture is a reference to the simple gable roofed sheds called fishing rooms that were once so common as a water line in Newfoundland fishing villages. To the right, you can see the Basilica of St. John the Baptist, also in the skyline. Our hotel is in a great location and just a couple blocks to Water Street, George Street, and also the Harbor. The Mile One Center that they use, an indoor arena and entertainment venue, it's only about a half a block away from our hotel. So some of you may have watched different events at mile one. Also the Memorial University is located in St. John's. Some of you may be familiar with the Royal St. John's Regatta. It's the oldest sporting event with documented proof of boat races that were held in 1816. It's held on Kitty Bitty Lake and it's scheduled for the first Wednesday of August. They take it as their civic holiday instead of the first Monday in August, like other provinces do. What I love about it is if the weather and wind conditions are not suitable, the event is just postponed until the next suitable weather day. But that often gets some folks into trouble as they head out to George Street to the festival the night before. And then when the weather turns bad, it's back to work in the morning instead of what they'd planned on doing, sleeping in. The bottom picture is the Cape Spear Lighthouse. Cape Spear is the easternmost point in Canada and North America, excluding Greenland. Being the most easterly part of North America and its position on the Atlantic, it has been a strategic importance in defense, transportation, and communications. Because of its location during the Second World War, there were troops stationed there to defend the entrance to St. John's Harbor. Now on the next slide, I just wanted to include some of my pictures to show. In the bottom right hand corner, it shows some of the fishing boats. The bottom left, again, is an area called Kitty Vitty, and it shows the lake there. The top right hand picture, you'll see some jelly bean houses on an area that slopes down from Signal Hill. And what I love about this is the entrance to the North Head Trail crosses through a homeowner's deck as part of the hiking trail due to the terrain, they cannot go around. So quite often she'll be out there and offer them a glass of water or chat with them as well. The next slide here is the Terry Fox. On April 12, 1980, he dipped his artificial foot in the Atlantic Ocean off of St. John's, Newfoundland and began his journey across Canada in aid of cancer research. Some of you may have been to the Terry Fox statues in Thunder Bay or Ottawa, but what makes this bronze sculpture unique is he is dipping his foot in the water where he began his marathon of hope. And you can see a wave by his foot. The picture of the quilt on the car I thought was fun. It's an ingenious idea of the owner to draw attention to her new quilting store. And it certainly caught my eye. Some of the ladies collaborated and pieced together the quilt to fit the car. And what I think is funny is that she has to move the car every few hours so she doesn't get a parking ticket and yet she needs to always have a spot close to the storefront. So it keeps it interesting trying to always keep that perfect spot parking spot. Some of you may be also interested in thrum knitting and the knitted trigger finger mitts among many other beautiful handmade handicrafts throughout both Newfoundland and Labrador. The three pictures across the bottom show some humpback whales spouting. And of course the puffin, everyone loves them. Puffins can flap their wings up to 400 beats per minute, 
reaching speeds of 55 miles per hour. They can dive 200 feet below the ocean surface, flapping their wings as if they are flying underwater. While diving, puffins use their large orange feet to steer so that they can hunt for capelin. From the boat, it's fun to watch the ones that have eaten too much and they can't get enough lift to fly. So they flap and they run all across the surface of the water and they flounder before often diving back underneath the water again. So leaving St. John's, we're gonna to head towards Trinity where we will spend the morning at leisure in this quaint little town, enjoying the heritage buildings, checking out the Cooperage, the blacksmith, St. Paul's Anglican Church that was built in the late 1800s, his cock house, as well as many of the other buildings. And before leaving town, you can bet I'm gonna be stocking up on Aunt Sarah's chocolates and I'm pretty sure you guys will be too. After lunch, we will tour the lighthouse at Cape Bonavista and it was built in 1843. The light at Cape Bonavista is one of the few in the world where you can still climb up the stone tower and see the same seal oil fueled light apparatus that was used in the 1800s using a mirror to focus light. We're gonna make a stop at Ryan premises and we're gonna learn the rich history of the Newfoundland cod fishery and stories of the Ryan family. Ryan premises was once the home of James Ryan, one of Newfoundland and Labrador's largest salt fish mercantile firms. He was the son of an Irish immigrant who along with his brothers took over his father's business and built it into an international trading company in the late 19th and the early 20th centuries. Now everybody wants to see icebergs. Iceberg Alley refers to a stretch of the Atlantic Ocean that goes from the Arctic to Newfoundland. It's estimated between 400 and 800 medium and large icebergs flow along Iceberg Alley every year. Their speed depends on the shape, size, winds, currents, and waves. As for the expression, tip of the iceberg, comes from the fact that only about 10% of the iceberg is actually above water. The other 90% is below. There's many different types of icebergs, tabular, blocky, wedged, pinnacle, dome, and dry dock. As icebergs drift south, warmer waters accelerate the melting, which make them dangerously unpredictable and very scary actually for some of the small boats that get too close to them because you never know when an iceberg could actually flip or tip over. The local breweries use the pure water of the icebergs and they make vodka, gin, rum and beer. Also with nature, depending on the time of year, sometimes we will see icebergs and sometimes we don't. We will quite often see the burgy bits or the growlers, the chunks that have broken off of the large icebergs, but actually haven't melted yet. On the next slide, we're going to look at the Beothic Center. By the time European contact with Newfoundland began in the early 16th century, the Beothic were the only Indigenous group living permanently on the island. They're largely attempted to avoid contact with European settlers in order to preserve their cultural. The establishment of English fishing operations on the outer coastline of the island and their later expansion into bays and inlets cut off their access to traditional food sources. In the 18th century, the Beothics were driven further inland. Violence escalated with both of them competing for the resources. And by the early 19th century, violence starvation and exposure to tuberculosis had decimated the Beothic population and they were extinct by 1829. The picture on the left is of the spirit garden and to the right at the bottom there is a sign of Joey Smallwood and that's located at the Gamble Lookout. Joey was elected premier and he dominated for 23 years. He was ousted in 1972. The next slide is prime birth. Today, on this day, we're going to be entertained at prime birth and we're going to hear stories from Captain Dave. He's going to give us a demonstration on splitting and salting codfish 
And you can see the picture there in the bottom center. Dave has never forgotten the priceless time he spent and the lessons learned in his father's fishing stage. And he set up a heritage center for us to enjoy. The picture in the top right, you can see Captain Dave there standing in front of father's stage. That stage wasn't always located there. They actually floated it across in the water and repositioned it. On the left-hand side is a picture of Bill, and he's gonna entertain us with his story songs. And I don't know if you guys have any idea what he's holding or not, but that's called an ugly stick. The ugly stick is a traditional Newfoundland musical instrument fashioned out of household and tool shed items. It's typically a mop handle. It's got bottle caps on it, some tin cans, small bells, and other noisemakers. The instrument is played with a drumstick or a notch stick, and it has a very distinctive sound. And quite often, like Bill's does there, it has a rubber boot on the bottom as well, because it jumps up and down as they're playing it. On the next slide, we're gonna stop and learn about the unique history of the Atlantic salmon. We're gonna admire them in their natural environment as they migrate upstream to their spawning ground. In Gander, we will check out the North Atlantic Aviation Museum and hear about Gander's role in the development of the transatlantic aviation and drive to the Silent Witness Memorial, the picture in the bottom center there, to pay tribute to the 256 individuals who lost their lives on December 12, 1985 in the Aero air crash. And interestingly enough, just last weekend on TV, there was a documentary that you guys can still watch online. The group in the bottom right-hand corner is the Anchors Away show. And it's a fantastic evening. We're gonna be entertained with popular Newfoundland songs, lots of fun and lots of laughter. Moving on to the next slide, we're gonna take a short walk to look at the arches, which is a geological formation formed over millions of years as a result of glacial action, wind, water erosion, and other environmental changes. Severe storms to this day still continue to change what the arches look like. The bottom right-hand corner is the ferry to Labrador, and we're gonna to drive to Red Bay it's a historical site that will take us back in time to when the Basque whalers lived and worked at Red Bay. The Basque whaling station, it was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2013. While we are in Labrador, we will tour the Point Moore Lighthouse and you'll have the opportunity to climb 132 stairs to the top and experience the daily tasks of the lighthouse keeper. You can see there on the left-hand side is the Point Amore Lighthouse. You don't climb all the stairs totally at the same time. There's little rest areas at landings in between. So it sounds worse than it actually is. Point Amore Lighthouse is the tallest in Atlantic Canada, and it's the second tallest in the country. It was built in 1857 to increase the safety of transatlantic shipping. After that, you guys are gonna work up an appetite and I'm gonna take you to partake in a Viking feast. We're gonna eat some traditional foods such as Jig's dinner and we're gonna enjoy some evening entertainment. The middle picture there is a thrombolite, meaning clotted structure. They were only the only known form of life from 3.5 billion to 650 million years ago. They are large, bun-shaped, cambrium mounds, growth form of millions of tiny algae and bacteria and are extremely rare. They're only found in so many places in the world, so extremely rare. Moving on to the next slide, it shows some of the ceramic Geordie Benet murals. They were created and fabricated by a Montreal artist in 1967, Jordi Benet. We're gonna have the opportunity to tour the Grenfell house. In the center there, you can see a picture of the house and the center as well and learn about him. Sir Wilfred Grenfell was born in England and trained in medicine. He gave 50 years of service 
to the people of Northern Newfoundland and Labrador and became a legend in his own time. On the next slide, at the tip of Newfoundland's Great Northern Peninsula lies the first known evidence of European presence in Americas, Lanza Meadows. Here, Norse expeditions sailed from Greenland, building a small encampment of timber and sawed buildings over 1,000 years ago. We're going to see the remains of the Viking encampment that was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1978. And we're going to interact with the Viking interpreters, seeing some of the artifacts. So these are just some of my random photos. The Anukshuks at Red Bay, a lady slipper plant in the bottom left-hand corner there. And then you'll see the pitcher plants. And that's the provincial flower of Newfoundland. It took 485 million years for mother nature to create Grosmore National Park. And it's a place like any other on earth. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it covers 1,805 square kilometers. The picture in the bottom middle, the table lands were half a billion years in the making, formed deep in the middle layer of the earth in the mantle. It was thrust up as ancient, ancient continents collided. More than 400 million years of those towering mountains eroding were needed to reveal what we see today, a surreal barren orange landscape, the earth's inner soul, the mantle exposed for us to see. In the bottom right hand corner, the picture there is the Lobster Cove Lighthouse. For generations of mariners along the coast, the lighthouses were their only connection to land while out on the dark sea. Lighthouses come in varying shapes and sizes and also how they were fueled and the different light apparatuses required to make them work. The close up on the right hand side is actually the top of Point Moore Lighthouse and it shows a Fresno lens. Of course, lighthouses now are automated. So I hope you can come on tour with us and discover what a Whittles Walk is, what a Dory is, why is there sea glass and what is it? Why do we see two different flags? Why are there so many moose in the province? What type of animals do they have? What is a Towton or a Jig's Dinner or a Baked Apple Berry? And what do they do with hard bread? You can try a pineapple crush pop and put molasses on your fresh bread. Understand what it was like to be a fisherman. Why the Cod Moratorium in July of 1992 ended almost 500 years of fishing activity in Newfoundland and Labrador and put about 30,000 people out of work overnight. The fish plants closed, boats remained docked, and how hundreds of coastal communities changed with the resettlement programs. It's a sad day when someone in their 80s that has been fishing their whole life all of a sudden is not allowed to even catch a single codfish for their supper. The moratorium in 1992 was the largest industrial closure in Canadian history. So many of the Newfoundland Labrador songs tell a story and I would encourage you to listen to a few of the seafaring songs and chanties. In closing, I would like to thank you and I would like to encourage everyone to add Newfoundland and Labrador to your bucket list of travel destinations. I hope to see you there. Oh, Carrie, thank you so much for sharing your love and knowledge of Newfoundland with us tonight. And uh, we really appreciate it. And I know Newfoundland is definitely um, on my bucket list and I'm hoping to be able to get there very, very soon. Now we can certainly get to uh, your questions. If anybody has any questions, you know, please type them into the Q and A box on your screen. Um, Carrie, I did have one question um, posed to me about why are the jelly bean houses so colorful? Yeah, Newfoundland does love their colors. Um, lots of people will think the jelly bean houses refer to a certain set of houses but it's just a general term, meaning any of the colorful houses in Newfoundland. 
One thing that I love down there too is a lot of the jelly bean houses on their mailboxes will also be painted jelly bean miniature houses as well. So it's quite cute to walk around and look at that as well. In St. John's, the jelly bean houses, as we go further north to the Northern Peninsula, we don't see that. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, we did get another question here from Denise asking, can we reserve a spot already? Uh, great question, Denise. Absolutely, you can reserve a spot right now. We do have uh, quite a few people booked already on this tour for July 8th of 2022. So we do encourage you to uh, book your spot as soon as possible. We don't want to disappoint anybody. Um, a simple deposit is um, required of $350 per person. That deposit is 100% refundable up to 61 days prior to our tour start date. So. Definitely, uh, we encourage you um, to join Carrie in Newfoundland with Westworld Tours. Um, now, we have another picture here from Karen. On the slide with the ugly stick, there was a picture on top of it with, I think, a huge whale skeleton. Skeleton. Is there a story about that? Now, Carrie, I, I know that that's at... Um, with Captain Dave, and I'm sure there must be a story about the uh, huge whale skeleton that you can share. Yeah, that's at Prime Birth, and uh, Captain, Captain Dave will definitely tell us the story when we're there, but it's a say whale, S-E-I, and recently he's just also relocated a second one there as well too, and his story is going to be a lot longer than mine, so you need to come on the tour to hear it, but basically what happened is the whale got beached quite a ways um, from his location, and he asked if he could have that whale. And the size of a whale, I don't know if you can imagine how long or how smelly it would be, um, how long it would take for it to not smell any longer. So he would go back and forth and obviously the birds and that would eat it and that, but he had to stake a claim on that whale so that nobody else took it. So in due time, he did relocate it to prime birth. And so, okay. yeah. Well, that's, that's very interesting, very interesting. Okay, we do have another question here. Um, Karen just responded uh, to your your uh, comments on the, the large whale with a big wow. And yeah, no kidding. Uh, let's see, we have a question here from Lynn. Is the tour start date in July not too late to see the icebergs? And I know that's a common question that you, you do receive, Carrie. So I'll let you address that one. Yeah, icebergs, it's nature, so you never know for sure. The prime iceberg season starts in April and does end in June, but I've seen lots of icebergs and they're not gonna be like years, a couple of years ago, there was that gigantic one. Um, they're not gonna be like five stories high, although one year we did see one out in the distance like that. A lot of them that we see will be like bergy bits or growlers, which have, are chunks that have broken off of the bigger icebergs that are still circulating throughout the waters. Sometimes an iceberg gets lodged and stuck. So in that case, it can be larger and doesn't move anywhere until, until it actually melts or pieces break off. So uh, the answer is, is I can't promise um, if there's, there is actually an iceberg finder that Newfoundland provides that I do monitor. And if there's any way I can get to an iceberg, I certainly will take you. Okay, that's great. Now, uh, we do have another question here uh, from Sharon. Sharon asks, what is the difference between a salt box house and a jelly bean house? Okay, the salt box houses are, are the older buildings with the flat top roofs. And the jelly bean houses is just a term referred to because they're colorful. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Now we do have another person that asked us, how many people signed into your excellent presentation tonight? Well, whoever anonymous is, thank you very much. We appreciate hearing your feedback. And it looks like we reached just about 100 people tonight. So that's awesome. And Lynn had a question or no, Lynn asked, uh, just said, thank you for ask, answering her. And Sharon also replied with a thank you for answering the question. And I don't sure, does anybody else have any more questions before we um, move forward here this evening? 
that looks like it's about it for now. So at this point, I just really would like to say, you know, a huge thank you um, to everybody for joining us this evening. We will be following up with an email in a couple of days that will have the link to the itinerary for this tour. And you can always reach out to us for more information on this tour and others by visiting our website at westworldtours.com, emailing us at information at westworldtours.com, following us on Facebook, or by contacting your local travel agent. Again, thank you to everyone for spending the evening with us, and uh, we hope you found our presentation informative. I should say Carrie's presentation informative. And thank you again, Carrie. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody, and take care. Thank you, everybody. We hope to see you in Newfoundland and Labrador. Bye, Carrie. Thanks again. You're welcome.